Hey out there, this is Wake Angel 2001 coming at you with this week's Sonic Boom Vlog. And it's, um, Do Not Disturb. Alright, so let's see how this goes. Uh, the episode begins with Sonic just, you know, sleeping in his shack when he wakes up to the feeling of some drool on his face. When he... Oh, by the way, he, he's also talking in his sleep about uh, somebody coloring in his arms because even after all this time, they're still going on about the arms thing. Um, so Sonic wakes up to find this weird pig thing growling in his face, and when he tries to shove it out of his house, um, Fastidious Beaver comes in and says that it's an endangered species and that they can't, um, and that since it's chosen this place to find a mate, he can't leave un until it, um, he has to leave until it chooses to leave. Because, you know, that's how endangered species work. Um, okay. They did this in an episode of Family Guy where an endangered species of bird had to live in Peter Griffin's beard until it laid its eggs. Or in an episode of The Simpsons when the Scream Pillar moved into their backyard. Alright, so, like, yeah, this is a trope is what I'm trying to say. This is hardly an original premise. So, um, so it turns out that at first, I'm thinking, oh god, this is fastidious beaver, what an asshole, I hope he gets beat up in this episode. And then Amy comes in and has his back, because apparently Amy is also part of this Endangered Species Protection Coalition. And like, ugh. like, ugh, fine, we'll, we'll help preserve the endangered species. So, um, so Sonic has to leave his house and he decides to live with Tails. And he spends time living with Tails, and, um, you know, they, they play video games, and, uh, Sonic is kind of an asshole. <laughs> like, he's, uh, like, he's always pulling pranks, he's sloppy, he, he's always bragging about winning video games, and like, eh, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, so one day at Mad Burger, um, oh, and he watches some show called The Real Housewives of Golgaba Village, and, like, like, Oh, God. Okay, knowing about the Golgabas, I'm just wondering, what the hell possible entertainment can you glean from watching these whiny, nagging idiots' wives? I mean, I can't even stand, um, I can't even stand the real housewives of, uh, of a, you know, of a place that's actually decent to live. Anyway, I just can't stand reality TV in general, so there we go. Um, oh, God. Uh, so, so when they're at Mad Burger, um, Davey intern says an order for Sanic comes up, uh, because, you know, internet memes too. Uh, they, I really, I really hate the stupid Sanic thing. I mean, where is the humor in spelling someone's name with a different vowel? I mean, if my name, are, are people going to make fun of me by calling me Angel? You know, like, I don't get the joke. It's a non-joke! <sighs> so Sonic goes to confront Dave the intern about how his name is pronounced, and um, as soon as he's away, Tails complains about how Sonic is an insufferable roommate, <clears throat> and they want to, um, and they, and they, they want to help the, the thing mate so that they can get the hell out of Sonic's shack, and they can, and Tails can go to being, like, a normal, <laughs> Back to being, you know, not having an annoying roommate. <clears throat> so they, so Tails sets up uh, an enhanced mating call that makes a sound that these creatures like, and it tracks one in. Um, but you know, the female won't have them. Uh, they try to set the mood with a fancy dinner, the fe but it doesn't work, and they have to leave. And so Sonic, Sonic is stuck outside of the shack again. Uh, oh boy. Alright, so Eggman attacks, and sounds like, alright, oh, Eggman attack, that's exactly what we need. Um, but while they're fighting, the male that they attracted gets into the village and gets into the middle of their fight scene. And, uh, they can't, <laughs> they can't fight over the stupid thing because it's also a protected species, and Fastidious Beaver actually goes so far as to stand between the monster and Eggman's lasers. Um, so when they try to move the fight over to where the creature isn't, it walks in the way, and that becomes protected space. <clears throat> so, they can't have their Eggman fight. Like, oh god. 
And like, Eggman's like, I'm a bad guy. Do I really have to follow this? Like, yeah, seriously, Eggman, you're a bad guy. Why do you follow it? <clears throat> I mean, like, yeah, Dr. Eggman doesn't give a crap about endangered species. You know, all right, I'm jumping the gun here, but in the original Saturday Night cartoon, both of these plot points got used too. There was an episode where Sonic was was forced out of his shack and had to become roommates with Antoine, where he was an annoying, disgusting, messy roommate, and Antoine went crazy having to deal with him. <clears throat> and there was an episode where there was this endangered species that the Freedom Fighters had to protect, and Doc and Doctor Robotnik. Um, he tried to just he tried to. I think he tried to capture them all because he, if he could roboticize them, they're like giant dinosaur things. Like, um, of course, those things were actually quite majestic, and it, and Sally was even able to hook up a translator for it, and it was able to talk to them. So you know, we had both of these plot points were used in a superior Sonic series. <laughs> uh. So um. So, uh, long story short, Tails' call turns out to attract a gigantic herd of these creatures. Why are they endangered again? And, uh, and, um, and they start rampaging through the village. Everybody uses their talents to save passerby. Sonic pulls a little girl out of the way. Um, Amy, Amy, uh, uh, Knuckles, Knuckles builds up a barrier wall that the monsters run around while Amy is, uh, protect, protecting that, um, protecting the walrus lady. Um, uh, uh, Styx pulls up the goat girl into a tree so that the thing stampede under her. You know, everybody just saves them from the stampede. So they all end up at, so at Sonic's shack, but none of the, none of the, uh, of the, um, of, none of these things are a suitable mate for the one that's in Sonic's shack. Um, that's when Festidius Peaver helpfully points out that if there's more than 50 of them, then you can then you can legally relocate them to a preserve or a glue factory or whatever. Um, but apparently there's only 49 out there, so they have to find a 50th one so that they can relocate the the herd. Um, so so Stick says that she can smell them and it, and uh, they follow her doing her little bloodhound thing up until she gets up until they find one which is a different color. It's orange. And it's also kind of has like snot in its nose and it's drooly. Like it's it's a particularly icky one. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so they 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 get it back to Sonic Shack, and it's actually a suitable mate for the thing. So they go into Sonic Shack to do their thing, and it turns out that they'll spend a week mating. So Sonic still has to. Uh, they can relocate the herd, but not until the mating is done. So Sonic and Tails are stuck as roommates for another week. Um, and so, and so Knuckles says, make that three. I've been living under your porch. Like, you can't live under my porch. Ah, I'll take that as an invitation to live in the house proper then. <laughs> so it's like, so he's like, with Sonic having to live in, so, so now Tails is going to have to deal with two roommates. And that's where the episode ends. <sighs> eh, I didn't really like this episode that much. Like I said, it it's derivative. I mean, this plot point was used not only in several cartoons prior, like the old room, the old annoying roommate trope, which was actually used in the first season with uh, "Can an evil genius sleep on your couch?" but also in other freaking episodes, like 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 the the, the whole messy roommate thing is such a common trope, and even the invade. Even the protecting an endangered species by letting it live in your house trope has been used, like in two of the longest running cartoon series of all time, The Simpsons and Family Guy. Um, and then, like, not only is this a common trope for other cartoons, that both of these tropes have been used in a previous Sonic cartoon. So yeah. Like, there's almost nothing original in this episode. It's not inherently bad, I suppose. It's just painfully unoriginal. Um, I guess I can consider it a low point of the season. 
Although, again, like, I suppose if you're a young kid and you've never seen the original Sad AM cartoon and you haven't seen those episodes of Family Guy or The Simpsons, because, let's face it, those episodes did premiere years ago, so young children who'd watch this show probably wouldn't be familiar with them, but I don't know. I guess, like, uh... It's okay to use a worn-out old cliché because our target audience is too young to have seen them. I guess that's, uh, that's the thing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the story. Um, not inherently bad, but pretty lackluster, in my opinion. So, that's it. Alright, this has been Wake Angel 2001. We'll see you in next week's episode.